Inspiration is a uh, designers looked like they were having fun. Before that, I was like a job, and then when I wasn't working, something that was fun. Because I thought that's what life was. You do something you don't like, and then you do you balance that with like, hey, I'm gonna play golf or I don't know, watch sports. There's ten shoes, more than that, but I've outperformed other ones. You know, the Air Force One. That shoe is an iconic one. The Jordan, it's more than an iconic shoe. You know, it sold more, but also meant more. And that's what the glorious part about the project was, is they looked in their past catalog and said, look at these 10 shoes. Do you have an idea to sort of give them new life? And, you know, that we can, as a brand, highlight, you know, these 10 sort of innovations in the past. And that's where I took the torch and I ran with it and I said, Let's do this. I can't utter enough that it's career suicide. As an architecture student, like I had a professor that said, I didn't have the pedigree or ideas or skill set to sort of work in any sort of important context. So every no is perfect for me. I thrive off a no. Off-white is sort of my resume. It's, a, it's almost like a laboratory. For me, it's like my teenage years is the foundation for everything that I've sort of done afterward. I was just like an average sort of suburban kid that was skateboarding, listening to Nirvana, Beastie Boys, rap, Wu-Tang. Like you say the music, you can think of a look. And so as I started thinking about clothing, I was always like drawn to what my initial interest was, and that was t-shirts. Hip hop and music, I was like, that's not low. That's not what I do outside of school. That's what I do. That's what I'm into, skateboarding. And literally, to get to where I'm at today, if I hadn't spent so much time on that other 50%, being curious about art and learning things that weren't on my curriculum, I wouldn't sit before you today. There was a farmer's market that my roommate and I, we were getting, like, we weren't eating fast food. He was like, I want to be a chef. And I was like, you're my roommate. Let's do this. So my classroom just kept getting bigger. You know, that's why I travel. That's why I don't see a limit between Paris and Chicago. It's like, I live here, but no, that's, that's not, there's no limit. And I think that young people, I know it's hard. It's lofty goal to be like, don't believe in abolish the stereotype and don't believe the box that they put you in. But life is so short that you can't waste even a day subscribing to what someone thinks you can do versus knowing what you can do. And that's like the switch. It's, it's like the switch in your head. Is if you can get to a place where you can act on that in the next hour after we're done speaking, I guarantee you it's a domino effect. All, everything just starts like, sort of like, you know, obliterating itself away. I'm trying to make it a few details to be lifestyle. So you want to wear it with a pair of jeans and a girl wants to wear it, you know, to go to work. That's, that's what off-white is. Off-white is make it street, make it wearable, make it, you know. If eight of the shoes were good and two were bad, mm. I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> there would be no press tour. There would be no tour about these 10 shoes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's a very difficult thing to you know, these are designed by designers. I don't even call myself a designer yet. It behaves in this sort of hybrid in between a traditional system and a new system, as in streetwear, that clothes just come out at different times, they're posted on Instagram, and consumers can buy them. And I'm interested in that hybrid in between them both. You know, I'm directly pointed at this generation that hasn't been messaged luxury to yet. As an off-white sort of look, you know, I'm looking to put this with like a t-shirt and jeans, perhaps. This millennial young person, they love to covet things. They're sort of waiting for a designer that's sort of faced to them. I want to make a modern version of her wedding dress. I like this, you know, I like seeing the shoulder. I love this idea that Off-White can go from like a study on graphic t-shirts all the way to a wedding dress under this sort of muse that I've dictated for the season.
this current collection that I'm developing, choosing Princess Diana as the muse, is sort of this resonance. <laughs> it's super like young Diana. Yeah, I couldn't be happier. It looks like the sketch. Can you walk? This is always what I wanted to do, you know? And no one does it. A couture meets street, but people say it all the time. It's this, like I'm designing this uh, candle, right? Or like the student or the classroom is this. Like if I put this candle in an all white gallery space, it looks like a piece of art. If I put it on like in a garage, it looks like a piece of trash. You know, like someone would throw it, throw it away. It's dented. And I think I often use this analogy in design. I could either design the candle and spend a lot of time like telling you about the candle, or I could just design the room and, that it sits in. Like, how can I like not be negative and be at, that's my big thing in my design studios. You can't say something's bad. Like you can critique, but you can't critique without putting something else. Because if you can just critique and you didn't suggest something else, then there's nothing else in the room for everyone else to say that's not good. And that to me isn't, that's not design, it's not productive, it's not cool. So these shoes were like, hey, if I'm here complaining about all these colorways, and I'm like, don't find sneakers that relate to me. You know, I wear the same sneakers and they get dirty and I took myself I wanted to, then I challenged myself to, hey, I got a design. I put something in a file. Hopefully it comes cool. Put myself up to the same critique that everyone else. I think more so it was that when I used to buy Jordans or like look at an Air Max 90 that Tinker did, I was like, I want to be the intern that sits in the room while they're coming <laughs> up with that. I, I didn't want to be a designer. I just wanted to be in the same room that because somebody does that, like, yeah, where yeah. does that happen? I was yeah, such a fan. Sad. Like, if, you know, there's real people in that room, how do I get? And so that's what I did. And like, you know, getting a project with Nike is like almost impossible. But I did it in my own way. I did another pro, it's the same way I advocate other people do it too. Don't just go to where you think you want to work mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I want to work there. You have to do something that they see value in so that the conversation is shorter. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned in building sort of like my sort of career path in like streetwear or fashion is in an ironic way is like being very concise. You know, I think because your life, especially like a young life, it's like absorbed by like things that you've been into like very passionately. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you start a brand, you can often try to like whip them all together. One big story, but it also, it surprisingly takes less for a brand concept. The less it is, the stronger it is. For Off-White, my contribution was I would take a young idea of streetwear, this idea that t-shirts and hoodies are important, but making that in the same factories as uh, luxury houses. So that's why we're in Italy. This is men's team working on pre-collection next season. Shoes are happening in the back. This is women's room. I just moved to this newer space because the, the concept is growing. How's it going? New office. <laughs> it's nice in here. But I have no desk in the world. I travel probably like 320 days a year. Eight flights a week. Chicago, Frankfurt, Milan, Berlin, Stockholm, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Vegas, and LA. I work on the street, literally, like phone in hand. I feel like Off-White might be one of the truly first sort of like luxury brands that's been just built from social media. The more focused, the more, you know, when your brain starts drawing parallels between say like Olympics, Nintendo, and anime, then it, it can start to get a little bit like fuzzy mm -hmm. as to like what does the brand really mean? You know, like mm -hmm. the biggest trick in design that I use is just like hyper focus and then repeat. You know, make one thing and then it's like a template. Mm. So when I see this, I see like seven brands, you know, seven strong brands. Mm -hmm. Like, an ama you said am um, some amazing like things that you might not even realize because you're so like into the whole world that, you know, th this is you and then you have one brand. Mm.